discuss about the pericardium and the great vessels. This, this is the covering of the heart. It is a fibrocerous cell. Why, from where the name came from? Fibro, the outer layer, it is the fibrous layer and the inner layer is serous layer. Here you can see the serous layer is usually shiny. This is the shiny portion. So we can say the pericardium has two layers, outer fibrous layer and inner serous layer. That serous layer again subdivided into two parts. One is the visceral layer of serous pericardium, another one is the parietal layer of the serous pericardium. Let's see. The visceral layer intimately adhere with the surface of the viscera. And the parietal layer, this one is the parietal layer of serous pericardium, which adhere, uh, firmly adhere with the fibrous layer. Okay? So from here we can say the pericardium has three, uh, two layer fibrous layer, serous layer and serous layer has two subdivision, visceral layer of serous pericardium and parietal layer of the serous pericardium. From the pericardium, you have to know the sinuses of the pericardium. There are two pericardial sinus, one is the oblique sinus and another one is the transverse sinus. Okay, let's see the transverse sinus. If I introduce my finger here, I introduce my finger and it passes, it passes transversely. As you see, it passes transversely. And in front, there are great vessel here. This one is the aorta, ascending aorta. And this one is the pulmonary trunk. So in front, there is aorta and pulmonary trunk. And behind, and behind, there is a venous structure. There is a venous structure. This one is the superior vena cava. And below, below, there is atrium okay so this transversely passes sinus this transversely passes sinus is the transverse sinus how it form it form by the obliteration of dorsal mesocardium later you will know about the dorsal mesocardium in embryologicals okay and what is its clinical importance its clinical importance when we do cardiac surgery we can pass the ligature and we can tie this great vessel separately uh, in front we can tie the uh, arterial structure and behind we can tie the venous structure and as a result the bleeding is less so prevent hemorrhage uh, it's it has it, it give contribution in clinical importance okay so this one is a transverse sinus now come to the oblique sinus oblique sinus is situated behind the left atrium from here you can see this is left auricle and behind the left auricle this is left atrium this one is the left atrium the oblique sinus the shape is inverted j shape you know j is usually like this but it's situated like this okay so the shape is the inverted j shape and it is intrapericardial sinus why it is called intrapericardial sinus as you know here the visceral layer of the pericardium situated here and if i cover uh, it like this so this one is the parietal layer of the serous pericardium so this sinus situated in between two pericardial sinus so it is intrapericardial sinus okay and what is its important it gives space to the left atrium when it distended when the left atrium is filled with the venous blood okay it gives space to the left atrium and you have to know uh, the blood supply and nerve supply we know the um, the outer layer uh, it lies towards the body wall so it is supplied by the somatic uh, nerve and uh, we know the somatic nerve is painful and uh, here there is intercostal nerve okay uh, so this uh, fibrous layer and the parietal layer of the serous pericardium this is supplied by the somatic nerve and it is painful and the visceral layer it is supplied by the autonomic nerve that is sympathetic and parasympathetic the sympathetic fiber comes from the thoracic 1 t1 to thoracic 5 t5 segment of the spinal cord and parasympathetic from the vagus as like as the visceral okay so these are uh, these are the uh, nerve supply and this is enough from this viscera now come to the red vessels here you can see this is ascending aorta this is ascending aorta this this aorta ascend from the left ventricle okay this one is the ascending aorta and here it make a arch it make a arch this portion okay here it make a arch and this arch give rise to three major branches 
you can remember it by B, C, S from right to left, B for brachiocephal electron, C for left common carotid as we go to the left side, left common carotid and S for left subclavian artery. And where the right uh, common carotid and right subclavian arises, these are the branches of the brachiocephalic trunk. So, and the rest portion which is descend, this is descending thoracic aorta. Later it will form the abdominal aorta and so on. Okay, so these are the great vessels and there is, and there is a vein in the posterior aspect, this one, this one, this one is the superior vena cava. As you know, the superior vena cava, it is formed by the union of right, in the right side right and left brachiocephalic vein. And you can remember the venous wall is thin and it collapses. So this, this structure is collapsed. So this is the superior vena cava. Where it drain? It drain into the right atrium. Here you can see, here you can see the auricle, beneath the auricle, beneath the auricle. This is right atrium. It drain into the right atrium. And from below, from below, you can see this is inferior opening of inferior vena cava. If I pass my finger, you can communicate, you can communicate between the, my finger pass from here to here, you can communicate between the inferior vena cava with the superior vena cava. And both are open into the right atrium. Okay. And now come to the posterior aspect, in the posterior aspect, okay here here so this one is the aorta ascending aorta and this one is the pulmonary trunk and this pulmonary trunk arises from the right ventricle okay obliquely it arises in the right ventricle and you know the pulmonary trunk give rise to the pulmonary artery what are what are the part what are the branches this one on the right side this one on the right side this is right pulmonary artery and on the left side this one is the left pulmonary artery and they go to the lung okay these two are the pulmonary artery and they are come from the pulmonary trunk you can see pulmonary trunk okay 